Welcome everyone to another episode of Mechanisms and Mentorship with your host, Rafael Testai, and my very special guest, Aaron Munker. The man, the myth, the legend, the person that founded Pipeline Design and Engineering. This is the place where the booth, where this episode is hosted at. And Aaron, people want to know, tell us a little bit about who you are and what the story of Pipeline is. Yes, uh, the story of Pipeline begins with failure. Uh, I worked at a product development company, I don't know, 12, 13, 14 years ago, something like that. Great place. And um, over time, I, I became disengaged. And the people who ran that company were very intelligent people. And it was apparent to them that I was not super interested in the work that was being done there. So 2008, 2009 came around the recession. And they had to make some changes, unfortunately. And uh, I was one of the people that they let go. And at the time, it was a, a very traumatic incident, right? Like I had um, my, my wife had just uh, given birth to our first child at the time. So we had like this little baby and we had just bought a house, right? So I've got all these new expenses. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, oh, well, what, what do I do now? So uh, I remember feeling physically ill for a couple of days just in the pit of my stomach, you know. Um, and I thought about doing all kinds of different things. I thought, you know, maybe the reason that I, I became disengaged with the work was just because I don't like doing engineering anymore. Maybe I need something totally different. So I, I was actually doing, uh, photography at the time. A friend of mine and I had started a photography company and I was doing that. I'd also, uh, been doing a little bit of web design on the side, a little side hustle. And so I, I had a little bit of work there. Uh, I remember exploring um, commercial real estate even. I was just, you know, I was going all over the place. Well, what do I want to do next? And it's not like I had this huge safety cushion financially saved up that I could just take my time and kind of tinker with this and with that. I, need to, I needed to, to bring some income into the Monker household. And I had a, a conversation with my father-in-law and he suggested that, Maybe you still do like engineering, you know, here you've, you spent, uh, I was on the seven year program for school. Um, here you spent all these, these years getting degrees in engineering. Uh, maybe, maybe you still like engineering and maybe it's just the way in which you were doing engineering that, that you don't love anymore. Maybe there's a different way that you can do it. And I thought, well, yeah, that sounds like pretty good advice and, and maybe I should give this another shot. And so instead of, uh, throwing engineering out altogether and going in a completely different direction with my career, I decided to start my own engineering company. And uh, that was pretty transformative for me. I learned pretty quickly that uh, what, what really drives me was having ownership of the entire process as opposed to just being directed to do, you know, this very narrow scope of work. Just do that and don't worry about all the other stuff. I really enjoyed being able to do everything. So I, I was... Uh, in, the, in the beginning, it was just me, right? I was the technician, the engineer. I was the assembler. I was the drafter. I was the marketer. I was the sales guy. I was the web developer. I did all of the things. I was the accountant. And, and that was pretty fun. Um, but that's how Pipeline got started from me getting fired. I heard this story before and it just never gets old. I, I love it when you share it. <laughs> it's inspirational. And so it sounds, I remember you saying before that your father-in-law told you maybe you're not a cog in the machine. Is that the expression you used? Yeah, he didn't use that, but that was okay. kind of the way I thought about it afterwards was, was um, uh, instead of being a cog in the machine, I could be the entire machine, right? Just take care of everything uh, start to finish. And, and please understand that the world needs cogs, right? The world needs people that are just like working in the machine. No disrespect whatsoever if that's what you want to do. That was just not uh, what I learned. That was not what drove me. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, when you say that, uh, just a family unit, being having a good relationship with your father-in-law, like so important. So I really admire that. So the next one is Pipeline Design and Engineering. When you hear the name, what do you think it is? And Aaron's going to tell you where the name comes from and what is it that he does at the company. Yeah, so I'll uh, first of all say that Pipeline has nothing to do with oil or refineries or uh, lines in Alaska or gas or anything like that. I grew up surfing in Hawaii. 
uh, on Oahu. And if uh, any of you who know anything about surfing and Oahu know that there are some very famous surf spots on the North Shore of Oahu, one of which is called arguably the most popular of which is called Pipeline. Um, I, I feel like a little bit of a poser here because I did not surf at Pipeline. I was always too scared. It was too big, too gnarly. So there are plenty of other spots that we went, but it was always the ideal. You know, it was this this like ideal to work towards. And it was where all, all the best waves were and the best surfers were. And I thought, hey, I'm going to start this new company. And I, I love surfing. I don't get a chance to do much of it these days here in Arizona. But if there's one thing I could do for the rest of my life, it would be I would find a beach somewhere and just surf the rest of my days. So I named it Pipeline because I, I always loved that, that place. And it just it was something that brought me joy. Um, and I thought, you know, it's this incredible place for surfing. I'm going to name my company Pipeline with the idea that it's, it's an ideal for uh, the, the best projects, the best engineers, the best type of work and, and see what we can do. So that's where the name Pipeline came from. Amazing. And a lot of engineers have tried to start their own company and not everyone has succeeded. Aaron has done a lot of things right. And that's why I wanted to have him on this podcast to give us some golden nuggets. Let's see. When... If you wanted to pull up that chart that you had before the pipeline way, it was a chronological order of events of how the company started growing. And in particular, through COVID, the company really took off, didn't it? We started hiring more people. What are some things that happened in COVID? What was your mindset? Yeah, in COVID, it was interesting. Um, we started the company doing general product design, or I started it doing general product design maybe an iPhone case, maybe a medical device, solar power equipment, whatever. It was pretty pretty general and varied. And then in 2014, we started focusing on test fixtures. One of our customers said, hey, can you design a test fixture for us? And we said, yeah, sure, why not? And so we did that. And they said, these are great. We need more of this. And slowly and slowly, we started moving more and more towards this, this niche of test fixtures and custom equipment and automation. So by 2020, by COVID, that's primarily what we were doing is custom equipment and automation. And during COVID, uh, of course, a lot of people were not working on site. There's a lot of remote work, but for manufacturing facilities, uh, those, you know, you, you, it's hard to work remotely if you're in manufacturing. So there are a lot of companies that were looking for ways to automate things. And we just happened to be kind of in the right place at the right time, I guess, and, and uh, landed some, some great jobs doing automation equipment development. And that's, that's, uh, uh, that was the, the growth that we experienced during COVID. That's where it came from. The factor of luck. But there's also a, a mindset that you had that, well, the world was going through what it's going through, and we're not going to make this episode about COVID. But he, he had this mindset that was different from everybody else. You remember it's like you wanted to maybe take opportunity of what was happening or I don't, we were just not giving up. Yeah, uh, I think, I don't know, there's a general mindset. Um, I, I've hired coaches uh, during my, my career and I have a sales coach and, and he used to tell us a story about a company that he worked with. And there was, I was during the 2008, 2009 recession and the, the, the mindset that this company adopted was we refuse to participate in the economic downturn. And I thought, oh, that's a really interesting way to think about it, you know. And so that, that was kind of my mindset as well during COVID. A lot of companies slowed down. And, and I, I think part of it was luck. We were in the right place at the right time. But, but also we were thinking about how can we turn this into a positive? Now, I think that's, that's the situation that we find ourselves in frequently just, you know, as people um, uh, something goes wrong and it's really easy to say, oh shoot, this thing happened and it's bad. And well, I guess, I guess that's, that's the end of it. You know, this bad thing happened, nothing, nothing we can do about it. But if you flip that and say, well, this thing happened, but maybe it's not a bad thing. Well, what, how could this be a good thing? How could we flip this around and, and, and turn this into a positive, make lemonade out of lemons, so to speak. So that was kind of the mindset then. And, and I, I like to say now as well. I think that's a great mindset to have both personally and professionally. What do you think makes you different from other engineers? Like what are some of your God-given talents, do you think? Um, I think that I am, 
I'm good enough at, at the things that turn out to be important for building a business. Um, I've worked with a lot of really talented engineers, and one thing I've, I've learned is that technical skill will only take you so far. You can be the world's most technically skilled engineer, so your technical skill is up here, um, but if, if your soft skills will just communication, um, uh, just the ability to get along with people, kindergarten skills, we'll roll that all into soft skills. If your soft skills are not so great, even if your technical skills are really, really good, there's only so far you can go in your career. And if you flip that though, if your technical skills are maybe not the best, but they're, they're good enough, you know, they're like, I don't know, 80th percentile or something like that but you have really good soft skills. You know how to talk with people, uh, you're nice to people, good kindergarten skills, right? Uh, then there's almost no limit to how far you can go. And I've somehow just been blessed to be good enough at uh, enough of these things, right? I've, I've, I've crossed the threshold of, of good enough at communication and, and technical skill and sales and marketing and negotiation and you know whatever else, all those things. That's maybe um, something I can claim is, is uh, uh, unique about me. Okay. So Pipeline, that's what you explained before. What are some initiatives that you started at Pipeline outside of your R&D engineering? Uh, there have been several. Um, maybe the, the biggest one that comes to mind, the earliest biggest one, was something called Pipeline Academy. And that's actually where Raf and I first met. Um, I, I hired him to help me build this pipeline academy. We spent, I don't know, eight or ten months working on that. Um, it, it was the idea behind pipeline academy was that uh, it, it, it's very expensive and takes a long time to go to school to become an engineer. But a lot of the things that you learn at a university, you don't necessarily need to be an engineer. So if you know that you just want to be an engineer and cut out the other stuff, uh, they're they're arguably are more efficient ways of training individuals to, to be an engineer. And so we were working on this thing, Pipeline Academy, and it ended up that we just didn't really have the resources to do it the way I want. So we spent eight or 10 months and developed some really cool content. There are a lot of videos on our YouTube channel for free right now that you can go and, and um, uh, get some basic training on what it is to be a mechanical engineer. So that was one thing. Um, Can I chime in? Yeah, please. Because uh, I also participated in these videos. There are over 80 videos for free. And the YouTube channel is going to be linked below. Teampipeline.us. That's where you can go. It's going to be this little logo right there. And you'll find information about the most commonly used hardware for mechanical design engineers. The most common websites to find the hardware, like McMaster. And what else can they find? Uh, there are some videos about instrumentation. Uh, common mechanisms, some equations that you might want to understand and know. Uh, there's some CAD tutorials and videos in there. Material properties. Material properties. Exactly. Yeah, things like that. Yeah. I think we had six categories. It was CAD, instrumentation, mechanisms, mater uh, materials maybe. Um, I can't remember all of them. But... So it's an introduction just to get your feet wet. Yeah. And the whole thought process behind that is if you go through those videos, you have an idea of what it's like to be a mechanical design engineer, and if a company hires you, you should be able to start contributing from day one, from closer to the start date, right? Yeah, exactly. Right. Yep. And the idea was to perhaps package that. Maybe somebody watching this wants to wants to team up with us, package that, and sell it to other design engineering companies, so they don't have to spend so much money and time training the new staff, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So the the dream is still there. If you're watching, <laughs> if you have the funds to f support that, it's still there. Yeah, <laughs> and it's it's maybe being rolled into something else called. Well, I'll, I have a couple other initiatives that I thought would be interesting to share, and I'll, I'll get to the other thing. Uh, but uh, one one thing that we do here at Pipeline, which has turned out to be a great way to build our culture, is called Gratitude Mansions. And I don't know, calling it an initiative maybe is like overstating it, but whenever someone on the team does something that is noteworthy of mention, uh, we encourage team members to recognize that team person by giving them a gratitude mention. And it's just verbally shared. We have team meetings almost every day for one thing or another, huddles uh, in the mornings and a weekly team meeting and things like that. And during those times, uh, we encourage team members to say, hey, uh, Raf did this for me the other day, so gratitude mentioned to Raf. I appreciated that. 
And it's just been a wonderful way to, to build um, community and culture with, within our company. Um, an, another thing that's been kind of fun, we've only done once, but we're coming up on, on the, the second one now, is a, a spouse appreciation day, which I've never seen done at a company, but you know, all of us are here working and our spouses, those of us who are married uh, uh, or have a significant other, they're, they're home, um, uh, maybe watching the kids, maybe, you know, uh, taking care of the house or, or whatever. But They're holding it down. Yeah, right. They're, <laughs> they're supporting us as, as we're here working. And so I thought, oh, that'd be really cool just to have a spouse appreciation day. So we did the first one last year. Success. And yeah, I, I think people really liked it. It, it, was, it was a lot of fun. Another way to build culture. What if uh, someone were to bring a dog? I think someone did bring a dog. Yeah. Uh, Aaron also hosts the Being an Engineer podcast, which as of right now is ranked the number one mechanical engineer podcast on Google. So that's pretty cool. And he's going to show us behind the scenes one of the metrics over there on the top, on the bottom left, April 2020. On the right, November 2022, today. So look at this graph and look at downloads. That's a... Uh, it's pretty cool. You want to tell people about the Being an Engineer podcast? Yeah, for sure. Uh, so this was another COVID initiative. Um, well, I guess I should have included that in my initiatives. Uh, I, I, I mentioned that I've worked with a variety of coaches over the years, and I, I had a, a business development coach I was working with back then, and he said, what if COVID decimates your business? What if things go so poorly for you because of COVID that you have to close your doors and go out of business? What would you do next? And I thought, oh, that's such an interesting question. So I, I started thinking about things I like to do. And I thought, well, I enjoy, um, I enjoy learning new things. And I enjoy speaking with, with interesting people who have fun stories to share. Uh, I kind of like doing some writing. I don't mind doing some public speaking every now and then. Uh, what could I do that kind of fits in those categories? And, and initially, I thought, well, maybe I should write a book and but then I discarded that. I thought I was pretty far away from like what I'm doing, right? Engineering. And then I had this idea, well, what about a podcast? That, that's kind of in that area. And, and I realized pretty quickly, well, I don't need to wait for my business to go out of business to start a podcast. I'll just do it now. And so I did. And it's been, it's been really a lot of fun and very fulfilling. You could come back and say, hey, guys, I'm not going to start this podcast. I'm waiting for the yeah. pipeline to go out of business. So you guys hurry up. <laughs> okay. Let's just wait till the cash runs out and then, exactly. I'll, then I'll get started with this. Well, the thing that we're going to talk about in the next video is something called a design accelerator. I mean, if that sparks your curiosity, stick around and click on the link below. But for now, this is Rafael Destai and Aaron Munker. Thank you for watching.